good stylistic. But let, let's see what the composition gets rounded up with. And there you have it. Because they now know, oh, they have an enemy in the AD carry pod. That's going to be their strong carry. Let's just get the long range ultimate to come through from the side of on with the engage, with the follow up as well. Goes back to the point you were just speaking about, Medic. And the low mobility in the AD carry as well. If this is something like an Ezreal, perhaps you don't go on there because Ezreal can always just jump away. Gale Force, still an option for Unify, but we'll see where he goes in terms of itemization as the game goes on. So, Gorbog, cool we have our compositions lined up here. What are we feeling? I, to me, I'm not really seeing any of that split push shenanigans. I'm seeing two compositions that really want to go head to head in a 5v5. Yeah, and I, I'd agree with you. I think from the side of the top lane, you know, now is going to have some prior into the uh, on just due to the fact that he's ranged. Usually, Joe comes through in the first three levels or on level three instead when you get agency to your W, some more mobility, so on doesn't have a good trade back. In the mid lane, it's going to be interesting because Ari with the charm can stop the distortion coming through from the LeBlanc. Um, so it's about playing it cleverly around the wave. So there's at least a minion blocking you, but then that comes down to position. But obviously, the fight for push in lane, the fight for the skirmishes, going to be very important. Every game is about jungle. But even more so, on. I think oh, here. Definitely. Because we last game, at least, if we take a look at like Order versus G2, right? You know, there was an Evelyn, so it's very much about, oh, let's go in and counter jungle it instead. But this game, Lee Sin, Volibear, they want to do the same. And the same with Ari here. Like, if you can win the 2v2 in the mid lane, you get yourself ahead there. You're shutting two people down. You're opening up the map pressure even further to move it down towards the bot side. If you succeed with the 2v2 in the mid lane for Wildcats, and then you move it down to bot lane, they're going to be in so many troubles from the side of Unified and Kai Wing. So. Let's see how the early game plays out because stabilizing or getting ahead is going to be incredibly important. Very much agree with you there. Big game for both these teams. PSG sitting at 0-2 after their third PCS win in a row. They have struggled here on the international stage to really make a name for themselves. But Wildcats definitely a, an opposition that they are eyeing up as a possible win. We talked a little bit about the change in style for PSG coming into playoffs. And I think we see that evident in this game as well. In the regular season, they were dumpstering folks in lane. They were all over the map, just absolutely dominating through the first 14 minutes. And then in playoffs, they moved much more towards this slower, teamfight orientated, scaling yeah. style. And I think we see that in their composition here. Honestly, I had such a hard time reading what PSG was about, but specifically because you're mentioning what you are right now. Like, how do you suddenly just slow down as a team compared to what you did in regular season? And I also think that's why they've had some of the losses here. I actually think they digressed a little bit in terms of what gives wins in a meta like this, and specifically at this MSI meta as well where it's so much about these early skirmishes, the small team fighting as soon as you hit six. That's why we see Wukong be so prevalent as well, right? That's why we see the Jarvan still come through because getting a laner ahead in the early game is much easier to play off for than playing on the open map like the Twisted Fate that we've seen some teams fall to with. A little bit of damage in the bottom lane. Early ward from Unified and Kaiwing. Hook coming in from Farfetch as well. He's got the Glacial Augments and no shield for him. No aftershock for him. Cleanse coming out from Holy Phoenix. Unified ticking away. No cleanse, but does have the heal now. Summon the spell advantage over to the PSG bottom lane. Oh, but at least with the range advantage into support pool here from Kaiwing into the melee of Nautilus, you will get the push first. You can only really play when you have the hook. If the bot lane of, I, uh, of Wildcats now got level 2 first, could have for sure tried going in there, but... Yes, Unified is looking low, but he's got the Sephiroth, and he still has heal. So from the side of PSG, still in a comfortable position. In a really good position. And Kaiwing actually going for the Spell Thief's Edge here on the Renata. Sometimes we do see Relic Shield just for that little bit of extra tankiness, a little bit of extra sustain in the lane. But when you know you're playing into a melee matchup like this, you just have so much more time to auto attack, harass, to harass with your E, and it becomes very difficult for Farfetch and Holy Phoenix to step up. Okay, so Junglers right now, both of them are pathing down towards the bot side. Wolves have been skipped so far from Ferret. He's going to be taking the blue buff, and he's got two decisions. Either you can move down towards the bot side, you can try and skirmish there, see if you can get them. I don't think that's what he's going to be doing, because they're crashing the rave right now for PSG, which means a slow push will come back. So I think he's going to try and path up towards top side, knowing on the side of PSG that Volibear path bot, maybe sometimes they'll think he's gone for a reset, and we've seen some teams then mistakenly thinking he's on the bot side, then die on top side instead. For the moment, though, Ferret decides against doing, as you say, his Wolves and his Crocs is going to path down towards him. Means his gank time is a little bit earlier than Shu Hans. Handshake back from Kai Wing. Flash forward, Kai Wing locked up. Has to try and flash away, but can't escape. The chase is on, Ferret there. Kai Wing first to fall. Barfetch takes the kill. Shu Han, you're not going to follow that one in. And there you have it. I just stand corrected immediately. I thought for sure as a bot lane, you would know you would need to have the slow push because Volley Bear is coming through. But they disrespect the fact that Ferris has skipped the Wolves camp, skipped the Crocs camp. Because of that, he's there earlier and he's shutting down a bot lane who's already used some summoner spells. And Kaiwing not respecting the flash on the hook initially as well. 
obviously not the easiest of reactions to do, but because he got hooked, perhaps thinking Suhan would be there in time, Suhan now will be losing his Razor Beaks. Farfetch shadowing here, it's smart from Istanbul Wildcats, making sure that if Juhan was here for the fight, do they it. would have a man advantage, as you say, don't do it. And it will be stolen by Ferret. And that's what they gain, you know, that he helps out the bot lane, the bot lane helps him out a little bit, trying to get some counter jungling come through. And then that extra pressure has now led to Seren being just shadowed a little bit while he's pushing in the wave. There's not much that PSG can get on the other end. Yes, you can try and move into the enemy jungle, but the Raptors have not respawned yet. So Juhan, he's going to have to settle for Skull Crab. Farfetch doing the right thing, as you say. Shadowing his mid laner, making sure that wave pushes in, can use the Relic Shield stacks. It does steal a small amount of XP away from the Do you know how many mid laners cry about that? I know, I, like, they, it's just like, I'm two just support to maids, we've been there so many times. <laughs> Farfetch will be spotted here, as will Seven. Unified and Kai Wing, no summoners between them, but they do have Gravitum. And even though they're only level two with this wave pushing in, we'll see if Wildcats want to go for the full dive. Double TP is available from PSG. Bay in a position to TP in. Level 3 now hit. There's the first TP. Graviton propped on Holy Phoenix. Handshake back. Double stun coming in. Bay looking for the chase. Flash charm. Just short. Seven dives in once again with the distortion. Ferret trying to get away. No flash. Remember on that body bear from the initial play. DSG though able to react. Do have to burn a TP to do so. And that's the oh. thing. They continue. Holy Phoenix diving in. They don't know Shuhan's here. A great charm on the Holy Phoenix. He'll get one. But he will pay for it with his life. And now the chase is on. Good dash from Seren just away from the handshake. But Yuan with the safeguard forward to a minion gets a double on the lead. And there we have it. That gives you priority. So the TP initially was wasted. They didn't get anything out of it. But then Wildcats, they opt in for the hook. They think they see a kill. But even then, Bailog was available. So if you kill Diari, it would just be traded back immediately. Actually, really like the movement as well from Hanabi. Comes towards the mid lane. Make sure that's waves pushed. Really in. good shift yeah, Really good shift from Hanabi. He'd already shoved in top wave on not the quickest wave clear, not the easiest wave clear. So he had to catch it towards that top side. And because of that, then Zhuhan knows he's got a, a, a bit of free time with the wave underneath the mid lane to invade. He steals away the Razor Beaks. And it's this knock on effect, the dominoes that happen after you make a play like that. You lose tempo on the map. And this is what we mean when we talk about tempo. Well, yeah, 100%. But I, initially, I actually really liked the rotation from Wildcats. Yep. I thought it was clever getting the TP out. I think it's the re engage where you overcommit mm -hmm. a little bit that it goes wrong. Um, if you don't make that, well, you're still going to be ahead. You wasted TP, and they wasted a lot of time trying to go down and defend in the bot side, as you can already see. With the jungle having to go down on the bot side, it, it doesn't matter all too much. But the routing currently from the side um, of Ferret is, uh, oh, rather on the uh, opposite side of the uh, jungle, of course, from the PSG, is that he's on the top side. They're respawning on the top side. So having to go down on the bot side wastes a couple, like 20, 30 seconds. So going out here, not re-engaging, that would have been great. You stopped them in terms of efficient pathing. Because you didn't, well, this is what happens. And I think Farfetch just sees the bailout fall off Bay there and things. We can burst him. Tristana can jump back out. We're in an okay position, but the reaction for PSG is good. Call of the Forge got used in the top lane there. Um, maybe just to stop Hanabi from backing the wave. Not in the best of shapes for him. Ferret is up here. Only level four currently on the Volley Bear. A little bit delayed, of course, in his jungle clear. And uh, Hanabi with the wave in a, a compromising position for him. Just wants to be close enough to get the XP. Maybe step forward, get a minion here or there. Would have actually loved to see Ferret get aggressive, try and counter jungle on the blue side. You can already see on the minimap some great vision coming through from Wildcats. But since they didn't have the intel on where Juhan was on the map, could have just walked into him, and so they decided not to opt into it. And now they're on the bot side, where Juhan's the one with all the vision. So knowing these members will come in, he doesn't have a ward. Yeah, so there he had a control ward in his inventory. I think he was trying to wait to see if he could let the warding totem come back up exactly. in time to jump across. But Invest 75 gold to make sure he doesn't give the enemy team 300, and that is a worthwhile trade, in my opinion. Yeah, and so far you can just see it, right? They're, they're playing on different sides of the map. You take a look at the bot side of the map, that's where PSG has lit all the vision. Up on the top side of the map, well, that's where Wildcats has all their vision so far. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see now with Ferret. Can clear up the red buff, can try and look towards the top side, skirmish a little bit. Hanabi, he's going to have to play cleverly. I have to make sure that he's not put in a position where he's able to get capital light or get pushed on Ponum when Seren finally gets that pressure in the mid lane. You see Star Screen as well going for the Warden's Mail here in the top lane, just trying to negate as much damage from that Gnar as possible. Often you see a Barmy Cinder first on the Orn for a bit of that wave clear, but here the extra armor when you're playing a ranged into melee matchup just makes more sense, means that you're not getting chipped away as easily by your opposing lane. Eight minutes in though, pretty even between these two teams, not 
a lick of gold between them, you know, 100, 200 here or there. And although PSG had a good reaction down towards that bottom side of Stembo, Wildcats very much in a strong position themselves. I like what uh, what PSG is doing here, though, because when you hit the eight-minute mark, supports will usually Holy go up towards the Herald, but they've outlined from this, and because of this, they can keep the pressure up towards the bot side. They're forcing the hands of Wildcats, saying, well, you can't use all the members on the top side trying to get the Herald, but now that they, 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 they then spot the jungler, Yuhan, on the bot side, they can just start it up with Ferret instead. Aphelios with good guns there as well, unified with the crescendo, that white gun. The closer you stand to a tower, the quicker you auto attack. So you can just stand right next to it, auto, 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 auto. It becomes very easy for you to take towers down. Yuhan looking for something here. That's good great. pullback. Farfetch going to have to try and survive under the tower. But there's four people here, and Yuhan gets his third of the game. Jumps away, dies. He dies to the final tower shot. And the ignite ticking away. Farfetch will take it seven. Yeah, that's not how you get over a wall, my friend. And uh, just couldn't quite jump across, but still could play there by Istanbul Wildcats to answer with a kill of their own. But crucially, it's Farfetch that gets the shot down. So now knowing that Johan can get aggressive where he no longer has a shot down upon him, whereas the support that has collected up on him, you really don't mind that one for one there. You still get the plating, uh, you still... I mean, you lose to Riftel, and you lose to Drakes. You know what? I take back my statement. From the side of Wildcats, they're super happy about this. Because two plates are already down when this fight begins, Gorborg. And you can see what they're trying to do. But the damage from Holy Phoenix is actually absurd. Perhaps not expecting him to stay around and fight. And there you have it. Yeah, it's just a blast coming through. Bailout's not really going to do anything with uh, no champion around you to clear up the kill. And that's just going to allow, from the side of Wildcats, to get a little bit aggressive. Ferret can give the blue buff over to his mid lane and can start shadowing towards the bot side. Get this gold injection into Holy Phoenix. Get that win condition rolling, as we see from often from Wildcats. You can see Holy Phoenix 500 gold ahead towards that bottom side of the map. The only big discrepancy is Juhan being about a K up himself. Ferret's actually gone for the Futures Market on this Volibear, just trying to get those spikes a little bit quicker. Currently, Barmy Cinder and the Plated Steel Camps for him. We'll see how they use this Rift Herald, because that's really the next big thing for Istanbul Wildcats and for PSG to try and respond is, if you can get this Herald down, where you invest the gold, probably towards Holy Phoenix, as you said, and whether or not PSG are able to react and stop you from taking three or four plates. So they're slowing down the tempo a little bit. They're making Ferry clear his topside camps, but this allows him instead to just clear the camps move into Saren's bot lane, force away bait, and then move it into the bot lane afterwards to try and just come as four units, make the Rift Hell play, and then set it up for Holy Phoenix, who's just come off a reset. Question is then, how are you going to react on PSG? I think they're reading the play a little bit by moving Juhan down towards the bot side again. Juhan already with that core drink complete. Hanabi's going for the hull breaker here on the Nar. Of course, has been hit with the uh, nerf bat a couple of times, but still works relatively well if you want to be in a side lane star screen with the swag ignite. Walks away, just rotating through his unsealed spell book there, wants to get that TP back Barrett. up. Barrett a little bit caught out, but with the chase on here from Seven, we will see Barrett ulting away. Seven's going to land the chains, but can't stay around. Going in, Zuhan able to force him out. And that's just done on a wave a little too early there. You wait for Serian to get that mid lane probably. You then move it down. Then you'll be put in a good position. But there we have it, the rotation we just talked about. Two members in the mid lane get the prior, move it down towards the bot side, commit to the Rift Hell play. Once again, it is being read by PSG. Juhan is down here with this bot lane, so it should be sure to fall. Farfetch pulled back, flashes away. Juhan looking for the kill here. Farfetch though with a good depth charge. Damage coming in from the side. The Gravitum into the chase. Tower will fall, but Ferret now only has the flash to get away and will utilize it. Hostile takeover, very slow. Istanbul Wildcats fast enough to pounce away from that one. Bay goes in with another Spear Rush, doesn't have any more charges, but Istanbul Wildcats have felt the bad side of their greed before, and this time, well, they're going to go back in. Charm going in. So, um, Seven, of course, can jump back to the Dragon Pit. But good play initially from the side of Wildcats. The problem is then Farfetch, she seems to be on a different page, and the rest of his teams goes aggressive. They still get the turret, but. Dying there was really not necessary, although you still get the map priority afterwards. You can now move Holy Phoenix around the map. You can move him up towards the top side if that's what you want to. It does allow you to still have this win condition. It's the AD carry that we know Wildcats love to have in Holy Phoenix. Yeah, they've been funneling Grombus into him all game as well. Holy Phoenix here. We have to get a lot of the gold out of these plates. PSG trying to react in a 3v4 initially. Farfetch not timing the buffer there on his Q means that he's pulled back by the handshake. But you know, right, PSG, they knew exactly what the play was. When you have Rift held on, the bot lane turret is already low. It's not when you stop the turret from falling. But them getting a kill, you know, at least it's something. Yeah, it definitely is. Kills are something. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I, I totally lost where I was going to go with my next point there. 
I agree with you. Kills are great. Currently, though, still even between these two teams. Uh, bot lane tower falling does, as you say, unleash Holy Phoenix on the map a little bit. He's got the Kraken Slayer complete, but more plates for PSG down towards this bottom side because Holy Phoenix being moved up towards the top side. Star screen a little bit late coming down here means that some more gold will be pushed into bay in that mid lane position. Overall, a thousand gold lead for Holy Phoenix, but 700 towards Zuhan and Hanabi. And she's sitting about 900 gold ahead as well on this now. Yeah, but you I mean, you take a look at the Tristan, right? 0 one, three, and he's got 5,600 gold, the most on the map. And it just goes to back to what we talk about with Wildcat's playstyle. They feed him everything they can. Plating, minions, jungle camps, whatever you can get on the map, he'll have it. It's on the menu. And that has been the win condition from Wildcats. It's this star ED carry that you just play around. You see it as well in the composition. You have the frontliners, you have the front to back. And Holy Phoenix, he's going to be the guy to watch once you finally get these three items to come through. He's the highlight player that PSG needs to shut down. You can see how far ahead he is. Just generally 700 gold ahead of the nearest chasing opponent. Ferret here getting control of the top side jungle as well because he knows he's got the man advantage. Holy Phoenix and Farfetch up here. Tower plates have fallen, but still turret gold very available for Holy Phoenix as he should be able to take down this tower. And furthermore, if you take down the top lane turret, you can get deeper vision in the enemy jungle on the top side. What's that? That's spawning in just a little under one minute. Oh wait, second rift held as well. So the deeper vision you can get, the more aggressive you can get from Wildcats, and the more secure it will be to take that Herald. But crucially, there's another objective spawning at the same time. It will be the Infernal Drake albeit Wildcats don't really seem to priority that right now. Don't really prioritize getting themselves the word for it. control <laughs> down towards the bottom side. I do want to talk a little bit while we have a lull state. You know, people are pushing lanes forward, people are catching the waves, you, Holy maps. Phoenix is moving around the map. But let's, have a, let's have a look at Kaiwing's itemization as this dragon is taken by Zuhan. He has gone towards the Bandle Glass map. And in the last game, we talked about how Renata, or in this game, actually, we talked about how Renata can be quite tanky, and, and in the last game, and Locket is what you tend to see on Renata's. Now, Bandle Glass Mirror could be any of a few items. Shirelia's is always up there. Moonstone, a possibility as well. I've seen a few Moonstone Renatas. But as a Renata aficionado, Gulborg, hit me with, with your thoughts on why you would change the itemization. And I'll give you a second to answer that one. Yep. Let's see if they actually want to go for I'll the one here. Why would you change your itemization away from the standard locket bit? Okay, so I think at least when you have an Aphelios to play for, if you decide to go Shirelia, that has kind of been the key so far. Once you have either the Jinx or the Aphelios, even when you saw Thresh players go for Shirelius, you know it's for that extra movement speed on the Lantern. Star screen, how good's your weak side? Let's have a look at it. With the Ghost Charm just short. Good enough weak side. Ghost into Exhaust. Picked off the Summoner Spellbook, and he will lose the tower, but he survives with his life. Yeah, that turret was destined to fall anyway. Now with two members down towards the bot side, you know, you have a Rift Hell. You can try to push in the mid lane now instead. Saren just got top lane priority. He's going to be moving in now as well. Ferret coming through. Just question is if Starscreen can have a respond. He does have teleport. It has become unleashed. So we may see a little skirmish, or at least some posturing from both teams around this mid lane turret in terms of control. Coming back to the uh, Shirelia's point, I agree with you. I think it gives you a bit more safety for your Aphelios. Unified also gone for the Gale Force here to try and get himself out of some possible engages later on. Another thing is when you see two tanks and you know the team fights are going to be extended, you can't go for a Moonstone. But let's see how this one pans out though. Rift Herald has been deployed and mid later it falls. Now it goes down, Zuhan flashes away. Everforce across the wall into the charm. They're looking for Ferret. Unstoppable, but stopped in his tracks. Zuhan dives away. Hanabi now on the front line. Infernum doing a lot of damage as well as Starscreen has to flash away himself. Hanabi still on the chase. Another charm connects. Seven dives away, but Starscreen and Farfetch have no such luxury. PSG lose that tower, but win the fight. Absolute monstrous hostile takeover came through from Kaiwing there. Set PSG up so nicely. Yes, they lose the mid lane turret, but they'll be able to trade it back and they get a few kills, which enables them to finally get a gold lead in this game. A thousand gold ahead now for the PCS representatives looking for their first win here at MSI. Last year, they went all the way to the semifinals, took games off RNG in the Rumble stage and 3 1 in that semifinals. But so far, they've struggled in 2022. Yeah, one would say staying around after this one is a little bit too far-fetched here. So initially, good engage coming through. It's Flash, though, the hook coming through. And here's what you hate. As Nautilus, when you get hostile takeover, this extra attack speed, your auto attack roots your teammates. They can't do anything. Even Holy Phoenix was forced to use the cleanse. So he's not just killing his teammates. When the re-engage finally comes through from the side of Starscreen, they've used everything in the tank. They don't have anything to fight for. So it just ends up being your frontliners not being able to get out, and they will get cleaned up. It's part of the power of that hostile takeover. We talked about it a little bit with the Trindamir, but also with things like the Orn, with the LeBlanc, with the Volibear who are running into you. If you are in a choke point like that, it's very easy to lock you up. 
for the moment, though, Istanbul Wildcats still very much in this game. 2,000, well, 1,600 gold behind, and PSG now with a little bit of more, a little bit more pressure. Uh, but you can see Holy Phoenix, two items. Kraken, Phantom Dancer already complete. If he is given any time in a fight just to auto attack, he is going to do so much work. Seven, though, no good charm. charm. Almost dodged away, but not in time. PSG gain control of a single bush, and with it, take Seven's life. The, actual, the reaction was there for Seren, but the charm still stopped the distortion, and thus he was just falling down. And now with members from PSG, who's pushed in the mid lane, they can move up towards the top side just to shadow or allow Bay to push in on the turret. They don't really lose anything, but they'll need to be quick about it. They'll need to some members back, because on the next wave that's now coming in the mid lane, that's where Wildcats will look to try and get some aggression on the mid lane turret, but with Hanabi already shifted in there, they won't get what they wanted. Hanabi obviously very happy to be left alone. Hole breaker on him, but the rest of PSG want to look for a little bit more action as they chase down Holy Phoenix. He jumps away with the rocket jump. TP's coming in as well as PSG might look for more of a fight. Counter TP used here by Starscreen. Has the call of the Forge God. Bay off towards the side. Starscreen now a little bit isolated as Fair tries to join his teammate. Bay going in with a charm. No! So bring her away. Doesn't get across the wall, but the jump comes back in. Call of the Forge God going in. Suhan gets a reset out of the bailout, but still dies to the Orn once again. Farfetch picking up kills left, right, and center this game as Bay dives forward once again. Charm jumped by Holy Phoenix one for one. But you can see how much both teams want to utilize their aggression. A little over aggression though from the side of Wildcats and now 30 seconds until the Ocean Drake despawns. They're still looking, they have trying to re retain control around the river and the Draken area. Well, importantly for PSG, they don't have a jungler for 15 of these seconds. Like, he is dead, so they need to have control of this area, because otherwise, Istanbul Wildcats could just run it down. No ultimates on the side of the Wildcats, no Call of the Forge God, no Stormbringer, no easy ability to chase PSG down, and all they're doing is trying to delay, trying to wait for Zuhan to be back with his team. Look at the Gon still coming through from Unified. This is incredibly scary. If he starts stacking up the Chakrams, Having a team fight around this area will be incredibly difficult for Wildcats. They still don't have their ultimates, except for the LeBlanc. They know he's there, they know he's alone. He jumped in. Dragon down to he's three got thousand the nine to the wall. PSG, can you answer? Long range Moonlight Vigil. PSG pounce. Ferret down. Farfetch next to follow. You have to feel he'll fall. Zuhan diving forward. Bay following up. Holy Phoenix, no escape. Jump as far away as you like. PSG will hunt you down. A double for Zuhan, a dragon for PSG. Starscreen, the last man standing, but not for much longer. PSG with the X. They knew he was there. He just didn't care. He had the mecha stacked, and as soon as he jumped in there, the cooldown is so low on the Null Ultimate. He already had it again. He set up the fight beautifully, crucially unified, still had the Moonlight Vigil. And once again, from the side of Wildcats, they didn't have ultimates going into this fight. It was only LeBlanc, and that doesn't give you anything in the team fight. So when this beautiful ultimate comes through from Hanabi, there is nothing to do from Wildcats. The setup was there and it's just clean up from the side of PSG. Great stuff from Hanabi as well, to have the Mega Nar bar ready and waiting in that moment. Jumped over, hit the Dragon once or twice, but already had it primed and ready. For anyone wondering why Wildcats knew that Hanabi was there before they had vision, the Dragon attacked him. So when the Dragon, when you're in that bush, the Dragon will attack you. Immediately Wildcats are like, there's someone in there, let's put a control ward in. But they weren't waiting, where well, they weren't ready for Hanabi waiting in the darkness. Look at that spike. And just like that, yep. a mountain has been built. Almost feels like Mount Everest that Wildcats will now have to climb to get back into this game. Mm -hmm. Because yes, they did have their carry in Holy Phoenix, but still not on three items. And Unified looking on par with them in terms of the itemization, sitting very comfortably on that Gale Force and LDR. Obviously very good against the front line that we currently see from Wildcats. And it's one of those unfortunate situations where if Holy Phoenix had the three kills that are currently sitting on Farfetch, they'd be in a much stronger position. Maybe he would even be up towards that IE right now, but because he doesn't, because he can't just unleash with those auto attacks, he's now currently in the bottom lane with Farfetch and PSG are just pushing in. Two ranged minions left in this push. They'll take the inhibitor tower, they'll take the inhibitor as well. Down towards the bottom side, Farfetch caught out, he's dead. It's gonna be Nars him into the wall. What was he doing there? Well, Holy Phoenix and Farfetch were pushing out. Farfetch tried to back in that little bush. Oh, and then Hanabi was like, hey, no backing on my watch. But five versus four, and it looks like PSG, they want to continue. 22 minutes into the game, they're looking for an end. Everfrost roots up Holy Phoenix, he jumps back, heals up. Call of Portugal coming in again, wants a charm onto Ferret. Hostile takeover finds them all, Berserk. Holy Phoenix 
kills off his own teammates as Kaiwin claims the kill credit and Holy Phoenix can only stand and watch as his team lays wasted beside him. Holy Phoenix trying to do what he can, stand up once again, back to the fountain. But back to the drawing board, it seems, for the Wildcats. PSG with their first win of MSI 2022. And it is so dominant this time around as well. Every member on PSG was shining. Very difficult to pinpoint one player you want to call the carry. And now beyond the NAR, absolute performance in those team fights. Kaiwing as well with the ultimates from Renata multiple times, finding the best angle from the hostile takeover and the shifting, rotation, the reading of play. Yes, Wildcats were dictating the pace in the early game, but every time they were moving to one part of the map as the first one, the response was there immediately for PSG trying to pick up a few kills every time an objective was taken by Wildcats. And the thing for Wildcats is just a few times you're a bit too greedy, you know? A few like, times Farfetch was a little bit overstepped. A few times you look for a kill instead of just the plates. And because of that, PSG were able to get themselves on the board and fight back. And now this group is really up in the air. RNG, obviously, far and away the best team. They're going to get first yes. unless something miraculous happens. But then you have three teams at one and two. Red, Wildcats and PSG all sit on a tied scoreline right now. Yeah, this is for sure the one where the competition is looking incredibly close between these three teams. And I feel like this group right here from the smaller regions coming through is going to be one of the more interesting ones to follow as well because the, co the competition for that second seed is so close. I actually think Red haven't played yet today, have they? No. So they play RNG. So likely one and two, they are currently a one and one. Apologies for my little uh, misstep there. Now, the battle for Group B is heating up, and up next, we have the Red Canids looking for a huge upset against RNG. We'll see if they go 2-1 or 1-2. Don't you go anywhere. <laughs> nice one.